According to the Abdul Qadir manuscript, Sheikh Omar was the very first man who sipped this aromatic brown brew when he was exiled from Mocha, sent to a desert cave by Nerusab with little hope of ever returning. A better when yearning, this Yemeni learning that with nothing to quell his hunger, his stomach forever churning. He better be resourceful, resorted to eating the beans and nearby shrubs and never remorseful, but they were just too bitter to force him, so he chose to roast the morsels. And when that made him way too hard, soften him in hot water, and that's when something caught him off guard. The resulting liquid left him feeling rejuvenated and jubilated, almost forgetting the fact that he'd been exiled. Communicated and when word had finally gotten round to this magic mountain medicine that cured the sick and gave a kick, they caught him back for questioning. He said, In every habitat you're at, you have to find the lessons. Me, made this drink to think, plus it's an appetite suppressant. I call that Pahua. 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 It went from kahwa to kahve, cafe to coffee, from an Ethiopian cherry to the most traded commodity in the world after oil, and in a world long before it, it's what Muslims are known for, so of course they tried to ban it, so Pope Clement VIII felt he could no longer ignore it, said it wasn't so satanic after all, and had them pour it for him, then import it. Fast forward to today, where the importance of a pour over in Northeast LA can simply not be overstated, and while the hippest hipsters have a casual debate about which spots are overrated, I just try to keep it civil. Highly caffeinated, engaging in the sort of conversation that keeps me fascinated about these little brown beans traveling streets of immense silk from the far east to the wild west, like some sweet and condensed milk, maintaining their robustness no matter how far you send them, like sincerely yours, Omar the Fender.